guys! Welcome <laughs> to... You just blew my ears off with that. <laughs> Welcome to Nine Inch Charge, the two Dannys. Um, <laughs> coming to you again Welcome. with more witterings about some nonsense. I look like I'm glowing. I look kind of angelic in the light. I'm going to have to <laughs> sort out the light, I think. <laughs> yeah, not at all like your uh, your corn army. You should be more. You should be lit from underneath with like a red light. That would be good, Stop. wouldn't it? What are we talking about today? Okay, so today's topic is talking about whether you prefer a four-page document for rules, which is what Age of Sigma started with, or a full rule book, which is what we currently now have. So. Mm. Mr. Wosley. Well, just like I say with all of these things, I would like, I would like both. I would like a big rule book full of lore and pictures and maps and faction history and all that kind of stuff. And then I would like within that rule book, I would like the rules to be as condensed and easy to find as possible. Mm. Or they can be spread out as long as there's a glossary, because I always remember looking in the Warhammer Fantasy um, glossary when it was like, oh, what does Devastating Charge do again? Then you look at the back and you can find it straight away. I think maybe that's OK if you do it that way. Mm. I, I, I can't remember for the Age of Sigmar core book, but I know that a lot of Games Workshop books have this a really annoying thing where they just don't put an index in. And that is so frustrating. <laughs> there's no index. It's really good. I was playing uh, Middle Earth with um middle earth strategy battle game with tom yesterday and that has an index and it's really helpful um i prefer the four page rules with rules within the war scroll generally but it does tend to ebb and flow because if i'm really playing a game a lot i like to know what's you know i like to to know the minutiae of how how a rule works I think as long as it's clear, though, the four page is great because some some it's so unaccessible. Some of it, mm. it's just a lot. In in fact, it's so much that if you aren't playing all the time, you just end up missing bits or forgetting bits. I think what was nice about the four page rules is, like you said, like if if you if you miss something, if you don't know a rule, <clears throat> it is all right there. Um, I remember when we played. I I think we've spoken about this before when we played Drop Zone Commander across like three or four different books and it took all day and it was impossible at least like it's right there um and i think if you're brand new to the game um like that's and you just want to learn how to play then there's probably nothing better than that yeah and also if you don't so obviously for some people gaming is like they play all the time or quite regularly um and they might only play one system or two systems whereas when you don't play a great deal, as we don't, um, and you play a lot of game systems, as certainly myself, I do, it it gets a bit. You just want you just want to be able to put your soldiers down and play. Um, but I guess the challenge is to write it in such a way that it's robust and can cover different situations. I think. Um... Well, yeah, exactly that. So one of the things that I have found um, with the rule book since that's come out is that there are certain rules within there that are explained at quite great length and in, in good detail. And then if the situation arises, you know exactly what to do. Whereas when we had the four page rules, I actually found I referred to them probably more than I do the rule book because there was less covered and, and funny little situations will pop up that might not be explained. You'd have to kind of look in the rules and then kind of almost decipher it rather than it say to you this is what you do in this in this particular situation i think i think there's a couple, couple of interesting things here is where i wonder if you were coming at them completely fresh to wargaming i wonder if that would happen less because you wouldn't be expecting a rule for a certain situation necessarily so like you know i know because we've we've obviously had loads of rules and something might happen we're like, oh surely it covers that and we'll go and have a look go and have a look um and i think the other thing that i all, always frustrates me and, and why maybe i would like rules that cover all situations is it, i find it really important that rules represent what i 
think makes sense to be happening. Like, if two people were actually fighting, this would happen type thing. I don't like it when um, a rule is really abstract, I guess. Hmm. Sometimes rules can do that, but then you get into kind of, you get really into the detail. Like one of the ones that, all, that I always think of is, is like poison is it was a blanket rule that was if you if you hit on a six then you automatically wound because they're because they're poisoned but then you could poison a steam tank and you could poison like a war machine and things like that and then sometimes the blanket rules don't always work but then i don't know that i would add in an extra rule i always just used to say that instead of poison it was like corrosive acid or something yeah well, but then you've got to remember you don't have to necessarily set the rule the, as the outgoing rule, it, the rule can be unique to the miniature. So steam tank can be immune to poison, for example. Mm, yeah, and then it true. only affect. Then it's only the steam tank that needs it. I guess then the challenge becomes like how many people are immune to this, that, and the other. Like second edition forty k and like space marines <laughs> just just didn't immune to gas, immune to this, immune to that because they had their full gear on. Um, <laughs> I did. I do. I like the ease of taking the booklet to the game like when it was like four pages so the, the one i really liked and i'm not sure it exists anymore actually but I, I haven't really played 40k for ages is i think it was eighth edition 40k there was like a 12 page fold out thing with the rules on um a5 and that was really good because it had the extra depth in it but it it was easy just to take to places um rather than lumping a whole big book around i think you're right and they did do like a player's handbook for age of sigma didn't they and, and things like that and um there are rules and things in the back of the general's handbook now um so you can have them kind of in one place but i would still want the rule book because i think from my perspective the rule book isn't only about the rules it's about setting the scene for the whole for the whole game and mm. kind of getting yourself immersed in in the world, and then and then at the end you would have, you know, okay, so this is the world, and now this is how you play the game. And I want all that stuff, and I want to be able to read the lore and the narrative, and I want to see all the maps and, and things like that. And for me, that's that's a really important part of having a rule book, and that's why I would want one. Um, I think you're right, though, something kind of detachable or something that you can take away from the rule book that's easy when you're playing because. You don't want to be sat there reading a book. You want to be sat there rolling dice and doing that. I guess the question the is more, for your rules, do you prefer prefer a short set of like a four page or a more in-depth set? Because I completely agree on the rule book element. I love all the bit, like the, the scene setting. And the other bit that I think they miss a lot now, or I don't, you don't tend to see it as much as you used to get like a big section about like a very inspirational section with like awesome looking battlefields and miniatures collections and stuff like that, that made you think, oh yeah, I'd love that. I know the third edition 40k book had some great battlefields in the middle of it. And I always aspired to want those type of battlefields. Um, so yeah, I, I, you absolutely want to have a rule book i because because of all that extra stuff mm. i mean to be fair clearly i do <laughs> want to have rule books. <laughs> um <clears throat> all right so we put it to the community and it was what do you prefer for age of sigma would you do you prefer a rule book or do you prefer four page rules and the result was 79% of people preferred a rule book. Mm. And 21% of people wanted four page rules. Mm. Here we go. You know, every know if... one of these we do, we don't actually come out the back end with a solid opinion either way, do we? We just sit on the fence the whole way through. No, I said I want a rule book. Oh, yeah, but then you said, but with a pull out simple bit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you wanted every you want everything. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. All right, well, okay. Next time we record, I will try to have. I'm not going to sit on the fence. I promise. Right. Okay. Let's do that next. Tune in next time to see us not sit on the fence. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers for watching. Um, make sure you've dropped it a like if you enjoy it. And if you've got any topics you want the two Dannys to cover, um, let us know in the comments. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very much for watching. Please be sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think. I do read every single comment. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now, I'd really like to use this time to thank those of you who support us on Patreon or those of you who are YouTube members. You guys have entered the Hall of Heroes and you really are champions in our eyes and we raise our glasses to you and salute you. You help make it possible for us to do what we do and invest in our equipment, help pay for the hosting of the audio of the podcast and all kinds of other things. Now, if you would like to support the channel, the absolute best way to do this is to join the ranks of the Hall of Heroes and to sign up either by Patreon or YouTube members. And there's a link in the description below. And we also have some exclusive merchandise only available there as well. So a huge thank you to Sida Kuru Khan. This has been Nine Inch Charge and I will catch you next time.